Before we start, please follow our instructions step by step. This will help you to avoid unnecessary danger to your computer components. Do not open the packaging of your new parts or touch them until you know how to do it properly. The parts we chose are representative of the majority of options you may encounter. This is an ATX mid-tower from the back. I remove the four screws that hold the mid-tower cover to the frame of the case. Loosen the screws whose heads are covering some of the painted edge of the cover. Do not remove other screws. They may hold the power supply in place. And now we can remove the cover. Here, from the case back, we can see the openings in the metal shield for the in and out ports. And these are the metal shields for the slots we will remove later to put the cards in. I like to flip the case. It makes it easier to work with. It is relatively easy to avoid problems with static electricity. I touch the case or an electrical ground each time I am going to work with electrical parts or before I unpack my computer parts. Remember to do the same when you begin putting your own PC together. Now I will give you a quick orientation about different areas and connectors of the case. My case has a speaker already installed. You may have to snap the speaker into place yourself. It is very easy. There are more cables for the motherboard. These are the drive bays. This is for a three and a half inch drive and this is for a five and a quarter inch drive including a CD-ROM drive or a large floppy drive you may want to install. This connector goes to the motherboard. This connector goes to the hard drive and the CD-ROM or DVD drive. This small connector plugs into your 3.5 inch floppy drive. This tiny black connector plugs into the motherboard and lights up the power LED on the front of the case. If you follow these wires to their source, you will come to the power supply. Now that you are familiar with the inside of the empty case, we can learn more about the components we will be installing. 